Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are in beautiful Topaz Lake in Western Nevada, straddling the California Nevada line. We hope you'll come along on this episode as we explore the Antelope Valley, take a trip across Monitor Pass, and also try to find an old gold mine. So stay tuned. Pioneers arrived in the Antelope Valley of Western Nevada and Eastern California in 1860. Their prosperity enabled by irrigation ditches that diverted the water of the Walker River. As the rich pastures expanded, raising beef and dairy cows, horses and sheep became a way of life, along with growing fruits and vegetables. Antelope Valley is the home of three communities of Colville, Tobaz, and Walker, along which with the Walker River, Walker Lake, and Walker Pass are all named for Joseph Walker, an extraordinary mountain man who led wagon train parties safely through the rugged and dangerous Sierra. The Walker River still supports agriculture here today, and following this year's record snowpack, the river is swollen and raging with snowmelt. Topaz Lake occupies the far northern end of the Antelope Valley, split in two by the state border. The Walker River Irrigation District was formed in 1919 to store water for better irrigation, and Topaz Lake was one of the first storage reservoirs, completed in 1923. It was formed by diverting the Walker River into a nearby basin that had previously contained a smaller natural lake. Today, it's also a popular boating and fishing locale. We're spending the week of Memorial Day weekend camped along the lake's northeastern shoreline in the Topaz Lake Recreation Area, operated by Douglas County, Nevada. There are 41 reservable campsites here, with the ones closest to the lake set up for dry camping only for $30 per night, while the remaining sites one row back have water and electric hookups for $40 per night. The recreation area also includes a boat ramp, fish cleaning station, flush and pit toilets, showers, a dump station, and day use areas. You are also permitted to boondock along the lakeshore in undeveloped areas for $20 per night. Had we realized prior to our arrival that this was allowed, we probably would have opted to boondock on the lake. But our reservation is non-refundable, so we'll stay put in our partial hookup site.
enjoyed high temperatures here in the low 70s with beautiful sunny mornings and afternoon thunderstorms each day this week. It's giving Zoe the opportunity to catch up on her much needed beauty rest. I've got to wonder sometimes how Zoe can possibly be comfortable laying like that. However, we are always comfortable on our RV mattress. From our video sponsor, Brooklyn Bedding, where grand adventurers get 25% off their entire purchase. Improve your sleep while camping with a new RV mattress from our video sponsor, Brooklyn Bedding. They offer four different mattress constructions in 21 different sizes, depending on preference and price point. Everything from standard queen to all of those funky odd RV sizes. Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all of its mattresses right at their factory in Arizona. And RVmattress.com ships them right to your door for free, all rolled up and compressed in a vacuum seal. Just cut the wrap to unroll the mattress onto your bed, then cut the vacuum seal. For our mattress, Brooklyn Bedding starts with a layer of high density foam for a supported base. Just above the base, an 8 inch core of over a thousand individually encased coils provides the essential support. Immediately above the coils is a 1 inch layer of memory foam and 2 inch layer of hyper elastic Titan Flex foam. Finally, at the very top is a 1.5 inch layer of antimicrobial copper flex foam with Titan Cool, which is designed to maintain an ideal sleep body temperature of 88 degrees. Every RV mattress from Brooklyn Bedding comes with a 10 year warranty and a 120 night sleep trial. Visit RVmattress.com slash Grand Adventure to get 25% off your entire purchase with promo code Grand Adventure. Crossing the border back into California feels like entering another country in more ways than one. Gold and silver were discovered in the mountains east of the Antelope Valley. We're on a mission today to find the Golden Gate Mine in the hills west of Walker. En route to the Golden Gate Mine, the road is washed out. But there are some tracks of other vehicles that made it through before me. We're going for it. All was fine and going well until the bank gave way and swallowed Whoa, the beast. Fuck me. This is a predicament for sure. I am unlikely to see anyone driving this road for days, and it's a long, long walk of about five miles back to Walker. I have only the slightest hint of cell signal. I'm actually able to reverse the truck a bit, but I'm concerned that it will roll onto the driver's side if any more of this bank collapses. I wouldn't have seen anyone for days along this road, but there was one vehicle visible, a pickup truck with Minnesota plates parked about 100 yards back. I searched unsuccessfully for a bit for the owner, and right after giving up locating him, a couple returned to the truck from a hike with their two dogs. My new best friend Tyler has agreed to pull me out. I always carry recovery gear, but for the past half dozen or so extractions, I've been the rescuer, not the rescuee. By pulling tension at a 45 degree angle, we're able to get the passenger side rear wheel back on the ground, and the extrication actually proceeds surprisingly smoothly. That's enough of a grand adventure for today. I'm giving up on the Golden Gate Mine and heading back to the RV with my tail between my legs. When we come back, following a quick ad break, we'll take an extraordinarily scenic ride up Monitor Pass and visit some of the historical towns in this area, so stay tuned. 
During the fall, winter, and spring months, it's virtually impossible to cross the Sierra Nevada mountains anywhere between Lake Tahoe and Bakersfield, California, a straight line distance of roughly 260 miles. This year, the first and only pass to open thus far is Monitor Pass, southeast of Lake Tahoe and directly above Topaz Lake. Monitor Pass is part of the route taken by frontiersman and explorer Jedediah Smith in late spring of 1827, when leaving California at the end of his first exploratory journey. He was the first non-native to ever cross the Sierra Nevada. The highway through the pass was completed in the early 1950s, making it one of the most recent Sierra Nevada passes to be opened by a paved road. It makes for a gorgeous scenic drive. Here at the top of the pass, we're at an elevation of 8,314 feet. The only thing at Topaz Lake, besides the recreation area, is a small collection of homes at the northwest corner of the lake, accompanied by a small casino with two restaurants and a hotel. The nearest supplies to Topaz Lake are available a 30-minute drive away in the twin towns of Minden and Gardnerville, across a low mountain pass in Nevada's adjacent Carson Valley. Both are modern towns with a quaint historical core. Douglas County seat of Minden was founded in 1906 by Heinrich Frederick Dangberg, Jr., who named it after a town in the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia, which was near his father's birthplace. A large share of the town's first settlers were Germans, later joined by Basques and Italians.
Gardnerville was named for John Gardner, a local cattleman and homesteader who sold seven acres to Lawrence Gilman in 1879. Gilman also bought a structure called the Kent House, moved it to his newly purchased land, and renamed it the Gardnerville Hotel, which is no longer standing. Whereas the Germans settled in Minden, Gardnerville became a center for Danish immigrants who had arrived in 1870. Thanks to its location along the route to the Esmeralda Mining District and Bodie, now a gold mining ghost town, Gardnerville soon came to serve as a feed stop for the 24 horse freight teams traveling between Carson City and the mining camp. Following another quick ad break to pay the bills, We'll visit nearby Genoa, Nevada's first European settlement. Nearby Minden and Gardnerville, historic Genoa, yes, here it's pronounced Genoa, was Nevada's first European settlement, although it was part of the Utah Territory at the time. It is home to Mormon Station State Historic Park, which commemorates the settlement of the first permanent trading post here, established in 1851 by a group of Mormon traders from Salt Lake City, led by a man named John Reese. After building a trading post, Reese built a house and sent for his family in New York. He later added a blacksmith shop and large corral for livestock. The overland emigrant trail passed right down what is now Genoa's Main Street.
It's the Friday evening on Memorial Day weekend, and even though this place is booked up solid, I have no idea where everybody is. I don't know if folks canceled at the last second, but this campground is empty. Can't really say the same for the beach boondocking. It looks pretty busy over there. However, we're very comfortable here in the campground uh, on partial hookups, and we're getting ready to hit the road. Now, last year, we worked our way up the eastern Sierra north of Reno. And frankly, I'd rather not retrace my footsteps from last year. So we're gonna cut across the Sierra. You remember in that Monitor Pass segment, we explained that now we're at a point where we can cut across the Sierra and we're going to do exactly that and head for the coast. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer yourself, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure which we air every wednesday evening here on youtube we'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends family and also on social media but understand, it is extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comments section. It's where we love to hear from you each week. So until next Wednesday, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.